Adrian Wojnarowski dropped an absolute bombshell on us today, saying that the Toronto Raptors are possibly interested in trading for Kevin Durant. They're lurking in the seams. I'll break down the exact quote in this video. However, this is wild news. So I'm going to break down what the Toronto Raptors would potentially have to give up in a deal, what the experts are saying, how that would impact the team, and if we should really go through with it. So I'm going to break all that down in this video. So without further ado, let's dive straight into it. Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, breaking down the latest Woj bomb. Not a tweet, not a tweet, he dropped it live on ESPN saying that the Toronto Raptors, right, our home team Toronto Raptors could be lur a lurking possibility for Kevin Durant. They devoted an entire segment to the Toronto Raptors on live TV talking about the potential of Kevin Durant coming to the team. They didn't do this for Kawhi. They didn't do this for us attempting to acquire stars in the past. So this is this is big coming from Adrian Wojnarowski. Obviously, there's rumors about every team trying to throw some assets in to acquire Kevin Durant, and I'm sure every team is trying to put some deals together. However, the Toronto Raptors actually have the assets to make a potential deal happen. It's just how far will Masai Ujiri go in trying to send a package over to the Brooklyn Nets? Now, we're going to hear a bunch of rumored deals. We're going to hear what the experts say. I'll break down what people have been saying specifically in that ESPN segment. However... Be, be, keep this in mind. When we traded for Kawhi Leonard, up until the night, we traded for Kawhi, what, at 3, 4 a.m. Newfoundland time, I don't know what it is around the world, but at night, I was asleep. Going to bed, I thought a deal was going to happen where we, were, where we were sending DeMar DeRozan, Pascal Siakam, and, and OG Ananobi to the San Antonio Spurs in return for Kawhi Leonard. That was not the case. We didn't have to give up that much for a superstar in return. It was Damar and Jakob Pertl, who, who was a promising young prospect himself, but we got to keep OG Ananobi and Pascal Siakam. Now, everyone overvalues players, everyone overvalues stars. Kevin Durant is a little bit different situation than a Kawhi Leonard. The Nets have all the leverage, given the fact that he's signed for the next four seasons, right? He's under contract. He's not a guy that's disgruntled. Uh, in terms of, you know, didn't play, sat out games the prior year, not coming off of any injuries or anything like that. But I just want to digress, just reviewing or state that when we talk about potential deals, because sometimes there are a lot more than we expect, as we saw with the Rudy Gobert uh, wild trade, blockbuster trade to the Minnesota Timberwolves today. Five first round picks, six first round picks going to Minnesota for Rudy Gobert. We had no chance because there's no way Masai Ujiri in his right mind was sending that package to Utah. Maybe uh, OG Ananobi would make up for a few of those picks, but whew, shout out to Utah getting all those draft uh, capital for Rudy Gobert. But that's that's its own situation, right? We saw that big trade with Rudy Gobert. But yeah, so as I said, some could be more, some could be less, as with, with, was the case with the Kawhi Leonard deal. Now, what would the Toronto Raptors have to give up in a potential Kevin Durant trade? Now, Everyone in the American media is saying Scotty Barnes has to be in the deal. Sean Marks or uh, Bobby Marks said in that uh, in that video, he proposed a trade of Thaddeus Young, right, our guy that we just resigned, who is eligible to be traded as he was extended, not technically resigned. They did some weird stuff in terms of the contract, but he is eligible to be traded at this point. Scotty Barnes, Gary Trent Jr., and a pick, and a pick. They want they want the multi-time. Scotty Barnes award winner. They want our star boy, Gary Trent Jr., as well as Thaddeus Young, all going to the Brooklyn Nets in return for Kevin Durant. That's what uh, Bobby Mark sort of proposed on uh, on live TV there. Uh, Legler saying that the, the Raptors don't really have enough at all. He doesn't always talk about it. He probably hasn't watched the, the Toronto Raptors play at all in the rest since Kawhi left. Uh, Zach Lowe uh, broke down saying that Barnes must be included in any any specific deal with uh, involving Kevin Durant. So that's, uh, that's Zach Lowe's take. He's probably the most, him and Marks are probably the most biggest insiders on this uh, list, this panel head that they had going. Uh, Perk said some nonsense about uh, he wants the weather and comfort. I'm reading this recap off of Reddit post as well. I'm just, this is just craziness that's coming at us. I apologize if this is a little bit disjointed, but, uh, you know, R Richard Jefferson just cited the Messiah Kawhi trade. So, that's what the ESPN analysts that are working with Woj are essentially saying are breaking down, but it seems like the consensus from everyone that's sort of spoken on this briefly or with Woj or in these situations that Scotty Barnes would have to be in a deal. I know, I get it. I get the logic. Logically, 
you see this and you say, a guy that's top 15 all-time minimum, right? That's where most people put Kevin Durant. Top 15 all-time, still at the edge of his prime, right? Still at the edge of his prime, locked in on a four-year contract. Yes, he's 33 years old, all that. But top 15 player all-time, locked in on a four-year contract. It's his favorite team growing up. You have some assets around it. Could Scotty Barnes ever get to that level, right? That's what some people will be saying. Could he ever get to even close to a Kevin Durant, a 33, 34-year-old Kevin Durant? That's a, that's a question. That's a question, right? That's a, that's something you have to grapple with as if you're Masai Ujiri and you're thinking about making one of these deals, right? But you consider Scotty Barnes' age, his potential, his just cultural fit with the Toronto Raptors, right? Being a young guy that's embraced the city, that loves being here, that's that's stuff that has to have to be factored in. But I get why some people would argue. And same thing with the Kawhi trade back then, heart over brains or whatever. I don't I don't know if I'd be willing to go through with giving up Scotty Barnes, this young rookie of the year, all the potential in the world for Kevin Durant, but he would have to be in one of these deals if that's the case. And that that would be tough. That would be absolutely heartbreaking. But you know, Marks throughout Barnes and Gary, right? That East Young's not a crazy trade asset. I think that's just to make the the money work and a pick on top of it. I don't know if I'm attaching assets to a Scotty Barnes, maybe a draft pick or something, but if we're getting Kevin Durant, I want all of the firepower possible. I want these next two years to be, we are favorites to win a championship, right? With Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr., OG Ananobi, uh, Kevin, what is it? I, I my brain is just fried with this news right now. Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent Jr., Kevin Durant, OG Nomi, Pascal Siakam, keeping Precious on the roster. We just picked up Otto Porter Jr., right? We have uh, Boucher still on the team, right? That's the lineup I want to be going into it with if we are giving up Scotty Burns. So giving up Gary on top of it would be very... That would be a lot that we have to give up. Now, the Nets are looking for one of those blockbuster trades in terms of being one of the biggest returns on a trade ever. Right? That's what the Brooklyn Nets are looking for. And the Toronto Raptors could be capable of offering that. But attaching assets to Barnes, I think my heart and my brain sort of draw a line to it. Kevin Durant is old. There's an injury risk. There are some stuff there. But then again, you think about it like you take a risk to win a championship. So I don't know. I'm disjointed. I'm making another video later tonight. I'm doing this in between. I wasn't even... I'm supposed to be out right now. But I'm making going to make a more coherent, focused video before, uh, you know, to summarize day two of this year's... Uh, free agency or the Raptors free agency, but that's that's an interesting package. And you look at what the Nets are looking to, to to get in return. They did say they want at least one starter, at least one young or young like future all-star or current all-star in the package and a lot of draft capital. So that makes me think, could we do a Siakam? I think Siakam or Scotty would have to be in a deal. I think that would just that's how it's gonna work out. Maybe Fred, he was an all-star, but they do have Ben Simmons on there, but Fred or Siakam, maybe, and then an OG Ananobi. Those are, that's a very, very, two very solid players. That's young star, right, and current all-star. You're getting back in one of those packages. And then maybe two, three first-round picks. Would you be more inclined to do that if you're the Toronto Raptors? You keep Scotty Barnes. Fred and OG and picks for Kevin Durant. That Fred's our leader, though. That's, that's, I haven't put these things together. I'm coming with up with them on the spot. Let me know in the comments, would you rather trade Fred Van Vliet or Pascal Siakam if you're getting Kevin Durant back? I think the acquisition of Otto Porter makes maybe one of those forwards a little bit more expendable, if that makes sense, because you have a forward that can sort of slot in there as a starter on a championship caliber team, or at least a rotation player on a championship caliber team. But if you're throwing in Fred, would you trade Fred and Siakam? That would be a wild, wild deal as well. Looking at a lineup there, he might run Scotty at the point, Gary at the two, Durant at the three, OG at the four, and Precious at the five. That would be a wild, wild roster rotation there as well. My brain is mind boggled by the potential of acquiring a Kevin Durant. I've notoriously cheesed on the guy because he's playing for my least favorite franchise right now in the Brooklyn Nets, but if he came to the Toronto Raptors, man, and we kept most of our assets. I'm putting us as the favorites coming out the East, winning the championship next season. We get the repeat of uh, Warriors Raptors finals. That would be that would be pure insanity. So that's what Woj is saying. Maybe I'm reading into too much into Woj, but you get the Woj bombs. They hit harder than all these random rumors.
Bears. Let me know what your guys' initial thoughts on this were. If you think it's even possible, obviously possibly lurking doesn't mean we're guaranteed going to get them, but it does mean we have to think about packages and we have to think about what this team is doing for it. So I'm going to do a more coherent sort of breakdown later tonight, but uh, let me know what you guys think. You guys are the best to make this far. Check out the Instagram, the TikTok, the Twitter, all that cool stuff. Might make it in the morning too. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Uh, check out all that sort of stuff. I'm signing out. Cheers.